What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, here with another review for the 11th episode of DC Universe's Doom Patrol. Now, if you have not seen the episode yet, you already know what to do. Come back, because it's going to be spoilers, because me and Winston Alex Marshall are going to talk all about it. How you doing, Winston? Man, it's funny, because this, you know, anybody who's watching this knows that this week is Game of Thrones Battle Week. This is Endgame Week. So, like... Ooh, I'm like buzzing. Like my brain is on fire. Right? Matter of fact, stay tuned for the Avengers Endgame uh, spoil, full spoiler review is going to drop on the channel as well. Uh, this episode took a weird, really different twist than what it normally does. Uh, Jane is actually more so with the group. You know, she's actually Jane, like, and trying to control being Jane. Well, I, I think part of the reason for that, too, is based off of these last few episodes, while most everybody else was kind of spiraling out a little bit, Jane got a sense of calm and peace. Like, she's still going to have some stuff. Like, we got a little teaser at the end of Jane Patrol. She's still going to be dealing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, she's got a grip on herself now. Which is a good thing to hear. I, trust me. Uh, so, this episode, speaking of Jane Patrol and going back to the one before, this takes us back to the scene where Jane, is after Jane was getting married as Karen, she's passed out in the basement of the Doom, of Doom Manor. And so this time, we start off with seeing Larry on a date with John. You know, and they're all at the Big Sur motel, motel lounge and everything, and they're getting their freak on. And then they, they Pumps in the bump. Pumps in the bump. Mm, mm. Pumps in the bump. Mm, mm. Uh, uh. Which we were actually having a really interesting conversation about this for anybody that watches network television or anything like that. Just the fact that you don't, you can't show, you could like any hetero like sexual interaction. You can show all of it. You can show kind of all of it. But anything on network, any any gay or lesbian interactions, you actually will not see more beyond a little kissing and maybe a little stripping. They won't, not saying that we out here trying to see like, you know, dicks and shit, but you know what I'm saying? Like they don't. <laughs> They don't show the actual like. Bro, I just want, look, look, fuck it, listen. I'm gonna do for sure. Give me all the dicks. <laughs> I won't see all. I want all, I want all the dicks. I want all the dicks in the DC <laughs> universe. You know what I'm saying? I want nothing but dicks. I'm just, I'm literally I just want saying heroes uh, and dicks. <laughs> I'm literally just saying the fact that it was, it was like kind of a like a kiss, kiss, and then all of a sudden it was like them eating the sandwich. Are you like, saying, I was like, like, I want y'all to eat a sandwich while eating dicks. You know what it is? I want to see dicks in Hennessy. I think the closest of dicks in Hennessy. <laughs> I feel like the closest they showed was like the innuendo they got to. The motherfucker pulled out like a, a hero sub afterwards, and he like just like whatever. He's like, watch out now. He even said he's like, be careful with that. I don't want you to choke. I want you to choke. And I was like, y'all just out here just well, she innuendoing. Would, she will speak from old boy old Winston over here. <laughs> Winston won't see. He won't see. He won't see dicks and Crocs. Just won't see you. You just gonna take my shit out of context. I'm just talking about like just okay. We well, right. don't see no dicks and Crocs. Yeah, just dick out of scrub. Okay, yes. all right. Are you done? Are you done? Dixon for doors. Are you done? Dixon. Dick. Speaking of yo, Dixon for doors. So you no, <laughs> she said Dora, because because I don't know if y'all have seen the grown ass Dora the Explorer shit on YouTube. Come find me on Twitter later. I'll put links to that shit. That shit is hilarious. We've been talking about Dixon uh, and fedoras. You know what I'm saying? You want oh fedoras. Yeah. So you were saying Dora? I just didn't hear the part. Dixon vibes. <laughs> Dixon visors? <laughs> what is this? Uh, a, a 90s, like, yeah, nine yeah. inch nails? Like, yeah, no, nine inch dicks. I don't know why this guy was sick. He got all my dicks. It's wrong. It's fucking wrong. Because Larry likes dicks. Right, they know he's coming. Larry loves some dick. He <laughs> loves some dick from a boy named John. John giving the dick too. Now, we try to figure out who's on top. Now, I'm what right. is this voice? I don't know. Let, let it happen. Just let it happen. Just like let this. that shit roll. So we're going to go to the way Nick. So then the negative spirit wake him up, right? You wake Larry up. It sounds like the voice to talk to a nigga named Larry. <laughs> it sounds like Bernie Mac if he was playing a character named Larry. So listen. Uh, so the <laughs> negative spirit wake Larry up. Larry. Motherfucker. Listen, I'm shut the fuck up and tell you what to do. Shut the fuck up. What the fuck you sound like you an ass? So Larry. So nigga listen. Larry. So listen. So the negative spirit wake up Larry, and Larry... <laughs> <laughs> negative spirit wake up Larry, he said, Larry, who you are, you ain't, you ain't, we got shit to do. So, so the spirit, 
So the spirit is back in Larry's chest. And Larry, like, dude, put me in the dream again, please. Please, we was naked eating hoagies. Are you going to put fucking subtitles on this? Cause I understand you because I'm sitting right here. I don't know if anybody else is going to stand you. You got the same goddamn mic you get. They all understand a lot of shit. Well, like, somebody going to look at this video and say, my uncle sound like that. they my uncle. That's what my uncle sound like. So listen, I'm gonna talk about the dicks. Uh, so, see, <laughs> why we keep going back to dicks? I just want to put up uh, some uh, for a disclaimer. Uh, they met the Doom Patrol review. Ain't all about dicks. It's just the episode started off with dicks. So, <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> Are you doing character work right now? Like, what is happening? It, it, it shit working. And somebody say, hey, I like that voice. Can you call my voicemail? I'll I, I, yo, I dare you. I dare <coughs> you the next audition you get to talk like that. Because they, they don't know how you speak. So the next audition. <laughs> <laughs> So the next audition, where it's like, you're working at a Starbucks hotel, how can I help you? You're like, hey, who can I help you? Oh, uh, I, I spit my water out. Uh, it was good water, too. It came from the filter. You're going to an audition, hey, I ain't doing them. Jay Washington, I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning for the part of the barista. You know we on a timer, right, nigga? Oh, excuse the fuck out of me now. Now we on a timer. This nigga didn't want to do it before. Uh, so Cyborg is having problems with his body. You know what I'm saying? What it is, is Grid taking over his shit. Now, he didn't cut the old Grid all the way the fuck off. And he never told the Grid to <laughs> Let me finish this statement, God damn it, before you start laughing. He didn't have to, t- to take Grid offline. He's talking to Grid through a computer with an old fucking computer. Uh, he's got the green screen. The green font. You know what I'm saying? The little lady did green. And she'll Grid like, I don't I don't get no audio visual input. The fuck you doing, uh, uh, Vic? And he'll Vic. He like, uh, I don't know what's happening. Just having a little bit mouth. <laughs> I mean, Vic knows. Vic knows because he took the nigga offline, but he Wait. told Grid because he's typing. He's essentially AI in his ass now. He's saying. Did you say AIM message? Listen, I met a bitch named Erlene through AIM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of that bitch on my space. <laughs> her, her email was uh, early early at hotmail dot com. Now <laughs> dot com dot com. So uh, dot good? Yeah, dog it dot com. Dot com. Dot com. So she fucking so dot com. No dot com. So it was dot com. So you met her on like a like a like a cam girl site. Yeah, it was it was cam, it was, uh, cam girls names Esther, Erlene, and Josephine. The, were they the three golden girls? He was thank you for being a friend. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You traveled down in roads and back again. Doom, 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 doom. That hose is true. Wait a minute. You spread the pants and then no. come for dawn. So, so Shadmore's still talking to Grid and shit. And so Grid, I'm, I'm going to do the whole fucking episode like this because I feel like I'm stuck talking like this. <laughs> I can't go back, but try. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> then I'm going to lean into uh, what I do best. You better do that shit. So listen, so Grid is like fucking up the Vic, and Vic like, uh, we would do a diagnostic scan on a nigga. And so Grid like, uh, you know, you was at like 47% cyborg. But uh, now you're at 69. So, so nigga, ha! you're getting more metal. You know what I'm saying? The cyborg like, I'm black. I, I can't be more metal. I'm black. I gotta keep my black. Well, okay, come on. Black people be putting hella metal. Metal in the mouth, metal in the chain, metal on their rims. Like niggas all about metal. Platinum records of I, metal. I feel like I feel like you just did a lot of stereotyping and racial profile. Niggas get gold medals. They win trophies. 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 Oh, you you sing that nigga Drake, the one with the line. Bah, 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 so bah, bah. so listen. So so Jane, she get a little balls. She calls a fucking team meeting. Only Rita and Cliff with his big ass show up. And so she is mad and shit. She like, fuck everybody else. And Cliff like, look, uh, he lost the news. He found out that the, uh, the bump dude, the nigga that was banging his wife. Uh, was doing the pumps in the bump. bump. Pumps, pumps in, in the, the bump, bump to his wife. Uh, to his wife. Did a stroke. Uh. <laughs> so so yeah, he was doing that. And then um, and uh, he had died. And they found out he had died because an alligator ate him. Say that eight times. Cause alligator ate him. Cause alligator ate him. Cause alligator ate him. No, cause no, alligator take, ate him. Take, cause the alli- cu- take the cuz out. Just say alligator ate him. 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 You said like somebody's name like alligator ate him. Like <laughs> somebody's uh, Hindu name or some shit. Anyway, 
so so like so Cliff get the idea like fuck it, let me go see my daughter cause she in Florida. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 that just happened, I swear to God, it just happened. He get, let me go see my daughter cause she in Florida. And so he like, yo, he looking at Jane like, oh, oh, you got one of them personalities that a shit a nigga on a shimmy. So he like, Flit, come on out, Flit. Jane like, don't you call this bitch Flit. She like, Flit, come take it out, the Flit. Is it Flit? <laughs> Stop it. Why you sound like, why you sound like old ass fucking Martin Lawrence in life right now? So listen, so Flit come out and then Flit like, let's go on a trip. That's what you sound like, you sound like Papa Clunk. Wait, no, no, uh, uh, Sherman? Sherman, 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 do yeah, something. Listen, let me finish this goddamn story. <laughs> so then Flip teleported into a bar out in uh, Florida. He's hot as shit out there, you see it. And she so Flip, like, all right, y'all join. I wish fuck I gave myself a lisp. I don't know if I gave myself the whiskey one, though. <laughs> so, I don't have the shit you're saying. The only reason I'm following along is because I fucking watched the episode. <laughs> and obviously the audience has too, so this is hilarious. <laughs> Long story short, Flint flies them down. Like, I'm, I'm going to speed through this and then we can talk because this nigga just on one. Flint teleports them down to fucking Florida. All of a sudden, Cliff and Rita are like, we're going to go in here into the celebration of life and we're going to try and talk to Clara. They walk. Rita gives them a little bit of a pep talk. They walk in. All of a sudden, they're like, yo, wh- why this dude look like a robot? Oh, it's a Halloween costume. What the fuck you mean? fuck you mean? look like a robot. The nigga is a robot. They don't know that. And he goes, it's a Halloween costume. Don't worry about it. All of a sudden, meet a nigga named Big D. Now, Big D got some game, because he sees Rita and goes, well, butter my backside and call, call me Biscuit. Biscuit. Let me tell you something, babies. Uh, <laughs> those my sexy ladies that watch this review, I want you to butter my backside. You better use margarine, goddammit. I want you to be smooth as you can fucking be. <laughs> or you'll use butter as unsalted. I got high blood. Unsalted? You know, high blood, blood pressure. <laughs> I fucking hate you, man. I hate you so much. <laughs> I really do. I was like, where is he going? Oh, God. Oh, I know exactly where he's going with this. Yeah, fuck you. So Big D running his game, right? And he like, yo, uh, so what's your name, baby girl? She say, uh, Gertrude. Uh, Gertrude Chimp. Chimp. Because if you feel like we're saying chimp in this voice, you ain't going to say this shit. Oh, Gertrude. Uh, uh, crimp. I'm sorry. Crimp. But like everybody calls her Gertie. So what happens is we found out later that that's her real fucking name. Cause you found a couple of episodes before, before she became Rita Farr. No, that she was her. stuck to be Rita fucking Farr because her mama wanted no, shit. No, no, exactly. But she she tells that to Cliff later on in the episode. Mama that wanted that was before shit. Her daddy wanted shit. Her, her, mom, made, her mama called her Rita. Her daddy called her Rita. I'm going to call her Rita. They tried to make a little Jean Benet Ramsey, but she ain't died. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, Cliff doesn't have the balls to talk to Clara, but Clara gives a whole speech about how... Essentially, Bump took care of her her entire life. Told her she was adopted, all that good shit. And basically, Bump got she got a watch that she had got from her daddy because her daddy dead. That's what she think, and her mama dead. That's what she is. And so Look, she, cause Mama Hilla dead. She did, and she got it engraved to say, "To my dad, you're my hero." And that was to Bump. Bump. Like, and Cliff was like, "Ain't that a bitch?" So he go out, said he mad. Like, you know what the fuck I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get the watch back. Really, like, the fuck you talking about? You know, I'm gonna go find this motherfucking alligator named Francis. So he starts wading through the swamp, reading into the boat, and just reading in the water. Wading in the water, Jesus. Children. Or Jesus. It's Jesus later, it's children first. Well, you gotta, I skip to the second verse. What, the second verse is better. Say the first, because the first is how they help the slave. Jesus is involved. He's always involved. Jesus <laughs> is the reason for the season. The <laughs> <laughs> Easter was last weekend. It is a bunch of fucking season, you heathen. Uh, anyway, so they go and do the water. <laughs> they go through the water, and then it Cliff just starts to get frustrated and just like freaks out and just powers down. Rita like, nah, this ain't finna happen, and yells like a motherfucker. He Are like, you giving up? You giving up? I just wanted to get to giving up. Okay, ain't no goddamn <laughs> bitch. We were giving give up. So listen, so clip, so Rita go back home and shit, and then clip. He in the water. The old shit. You just dun 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 dun. Motherfucking Francis just. Not yet. Not yet. Rita says, "Fuck this. You do you. I'm gonna go back." I just said Rita went home. Oh. What the fuck are you in? Pen- I can't understand you. Why you understand other shit? I'm saying, <laughs> nigga, shit. Listen. <laughs> so I'm sorry to all the listeners and the viewers who are like, "What the fuck is going on right now? Did they do drugs? No. <laughs> I need some drugs. I need all the caffeine I can do. I got to go work on the security." Uh. Anyway, so when Rita leave, Francis showed the fuck up. 
Francis does the greatest thing ever at Cliff. What you do? What you hit, doing? hit him with the free will. He said, ah, with the doom. Came flying out right at Cliff. Like the Jordan. <laughs> and I went for you. Ah! <laughs> 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 What the fuck are you sound like you were in pain and orgasm at the same time? Oh, so and that, wasn't that Michael? Wasn't he always orgasming in pain? But that was like, orgasming was a pain for him. Did you know that in the in the back in the Shakespearean days, they would in writing poems they would say "die" to mean sexual orgasm. Like you'd have a woman in your arm, she say she, you know, and you she would ride you like from the fronts, and then she would die in your arms, and to die meant to have a sexual orgasm. So while you oh. was busting all your man milk in her, she died from your seed. I think it said man milk. <laughs> Ooh, I was just gonna say, I mean that makes sense. Like you know, Migo, even Migos been using that same language. Hit her with a left, hit her with a right. I'm gonna knock the pussy out like fight night. Let me say something. Also, you fellas, look, for those who watch it, you shouldn't be knocking out pussy. Okay? <laughs> you respect the vagina. The vagina is beautiful, delicate, and tasty. It is clean. Um, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that came from. I don't know where the fuck that came from Basically, either. Cliff beats Francis. We didn't have to see how. But clearly, he must have exploded the shit out of Francis. Because he walks back in the bar gooey as shit. And as he's walking, he's seeing Clara. Clara's helping to clean up for my own celebration of life for a daddy. Like, she got to clean the bar by a whole cell. Which is some old bullshit. Ain't nobody stay to help her clean up. What, what the fuck is Big D doing? Oh, he dicking down Rita. Rita probably caught, man, she can get Rita. She probably rode that boat back and said, Big D, let me get some of that Big D. Big D fucking in the trailer. Mm, 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 pumps mm. in the bump. Pumps in the bump. Uh, pump, 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 maybe, pump, pump, maybe pump, his name pump Big, it up. Maybe his name Big D and D stand for Dennis. <laughs> what? Yeah, that nigga Big D is a menace. There menace. it is. There it is. <laughs> so all that happened. So Cliff uh waiting on Claire. Claire said, I'm gonna be with you in a minute. And Cliff looking around and he like having emotional thoughts and shit, cause he a robot there with feelings. And so he You sound like a nigga that has metamorphosis powers and he's about to lose <laughs> shape or form of whatever fucking character he is. Cause you can't decide if you're Jay or your weird ass Uncle Clyde. I keep trying to go back into these voices. But you can't time. really do it. No, you're, I can do it. If you like a fuck, I feel. Let me. You're show having it. like an imp, like you're having like an improvisational stroke right now. You're not having a stroke. I'm a stroke. And it's one of the uh uh. I don't know what I'm a stroke. I just did it because it was gonna be real awkward. Because it's just me and Winston. And like I don't want him to see me stroking shit here. All right. Well, while this is so long story short. Cliff is going to talk to Clara. All of a sudden, he decides, you know what? I can't do it. So he leaves the watch when Clara comes back. And she has this moment of like, oh, fuck. Like, the dude went and got the watch. Like, and you can't tell exactly what she's thinking. But she's clearly having some thoughts about, I got the watch back from my dad. But this but man was kind of awkward. The only, at me. the only person. And when he grabbed her hand earlier, when she was trying to get up on the pedestal, it was a moment there for him. Because he, he can't feel directly. But he feels, if that makes sense. So then we fast forward to back to Larry's story, where he's trying to figure, the negative spirit has been showing him different things, and even took him to an old gay bar they were at. And at one point, John in the vision says, I don't want to spend my last days with you. And so Larry's like, wait, what do you mean? And so- Like this, not with you. He said, I don't want to spend them like this, because yeah. Larry has still not truly accepted who he is. So he, he just wants to go fuck in the motel, he, and whereas John like wants to- he wants something solid, something real. He wants a real relationship. And that's part of what the negative spirit is trying to show him. Is they're not trying to just show him like these little moments or whatever. He wants him to accept himself and accept this relationship. And so then John is like, he, I mean, excuse me, Larry wakes back up after the negative spirit wakes him up and he's like, yo, what is going on? And then he sees post-it notes everywhere. And he closes the door and then he realizes he has to look at it from an angle and it says Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania where John told him in the vision where he's from. So Larry goes to Erie, Pennsylvania. It just so happens six hours from my house. I think Columbus is six hours from Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm. Where the town that they're in is six hours from Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm. So, but Larry takes a cab there. First of all, where the fuck Larry get money from? And then when he goes in, he well, said- probably rich. Man, I'm, I'm, they're probably ready to her like, her like panty drawer. For panty drawers, but- <laughs> so, Isn't that where everybody keeps their, their extra money? Hey girl, I know got a little money in the penny drawer. I, they all got them by their left titty. I never That's see. I never see a woman put by white, her right titty. I have my, my cousin puts it in the right in her right titty. Every woman I see always go down. She puts her phone on the left because she gets her phone more often. And she puts the money on the on the right. So she don't pay for shit. 
No, 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 no. It's just that she, when she pulls her phone out, she gets her phone out more often. So Ladies, do your phone smell like titty sweat when you pull it out? <laughs> <laughs> we are off the rails. So Larry goes to see John in, in Erie, and John is an old man. Like, he's literally old, and he basically is dying. And so, but Larry, John knows exactly who he is and everything. John, Larry picks John up, they go on the porch. And John, John is like, so, tell me something. You got the strength like a 20-year-old. You don't look like you've aged a day. What, what have you done? Radiation has its perks. Perks, perks privileges. Radiation yeah. has its perks, so it's kept him young. And so as they're having a conversation, uh, one of the things, the, the overall thing that John tells Larry is that you need to let go and move on. And Larry is finally like, you're right. And as that moment, as they're having that discussion, John dies on the porch. And he leaves him on the porch. And I was like, fuck, that is sad. So basically, with this whole episode, it's about a, establishing who you are and moving forward. Which is actually like most episodes of the show, one way or the other. Uh, I mean, that that's what Jane Patrol is about. That's what... Essentially, Paw Patrol, or Doom Patrol Patrol, it's all about, this show is about accepting who you are. The freaks are otherwise that you are a whole being and you need to accept it. And they really go into that. And then, uh, you know, Cyborg himself goes out with Jane, which we kind of left this out, oh, yeah, to go her. look for something. And it turns out the Bureau of Normacy actually finds them. And was setting them up the whole time. Was setting them up the whole time. So they're, they're like, this got us a little freaked out because it was this black dude chasing this white woman. We're like, come on, man. Don't I was like, nigga, don't do this. Don't make the nigga hit the white woman. Don't, like, please, don't, please, don't, don't, do don't do this. Don't do this. So, so, so Jane goes to chase them. Cyborg gets out and this old woman comes out of nowhere, hits him with the flash. All of a sudden, Cyborg gone. Jane comes back, can't find him. Uh, the, the the black dude tries to punch Jane and Jane goes, I right, motherfucker. It goes, turns an hammer head. And when, they, when their fists collide, this dude, nigga's hand breaks. He jumps in the van, runs off, and Jane realizes, fuck, they kidnapped Cyborg. The last thing that we see is Cyborg chained to a chair, which made no sense to me because it was with handcuffs. This nigga is a fucking robot. He can break through handcuffs. You need them, well, like, he's heavy clips. He's a sensitive robot with a box fade, with a low-cut <laughs> fade. <laughs> All right, if you had to rate this episode, man, what would you rate it? I would give it four and a half stars. I wouldn't give it a five. Uh, I felt like there were some things I, I was missing from it. It's, I think it's more action that I'm missing because I'm always used to a, a high level of action in this episode, in these episodes. And this one didn't have that. So that's the only knock, knock off I have for it. But other, other than that, I love the story. I love the whole thing about moving forward, accepting who you are, because we're trying to get them also to accept the fact that they are the Doom Patrol because there's so much pushback on it. What about you? I would actually give it a three, man. Like, I, I feel like we've been clipping at such high levels of content with the show. And I'm not saying that I hated the episode. Like I said, it's right down the middle for me. But like before with all these other episodes, I was so easy to be like, yo, what's a five? Like Durang D Diane Guerrero fucking killed it doing X, Y, Z. I give it a five because you're talking about all this existentialism and you were true to the books. This is probably also still true to the books, but I found myself detached from the episode a couple of times. There were some very nice moments that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the line about butter my backside and call me biscuit and shit like that because I'm from the south, so that I've heard I've heard old heads throw lines like that around. Um, but I'm gonna be real, it wasn't my favorite episode, man. Well, so with that, let us know what you thought of the episode. Let us know in those comments below. Like, subscribe, click on the notification bell so you find out when more of the videos are coming up. Also, share this video. Thank you to everybody who watches these videos, who leaves the positive comments about loving this and have gotten into the show and to the reviews in which we, him and I do. It's appreciated very much. But Winston, tell people how they can find me. You can find me on all the social medias at the Swaggy Blur, T H E S W A G G Y B L E R D on all your socials. You already know Twitter, Instagram at Mr. J Washington. Let me spell it M R J A Y Washington. All right, join the Super Villain Squad on Patreon, please. Five dollars a month. That's all it is. Patreon, Patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. And check out the Mad Titan podcast. I get caught up on everything happening in the Marvel and DC live action universes. I know it had been a minute since I've been back, but I got a new episode dropping for y'all soon. I'll holler at you later. Take care. I'm out of here. Peace. Did you like having a stroke at the end of that? <laughs>